Hello guys and welcome to Programmatics. Today I will talk about fast returns and multiple exit points from functions. You probably heard the term fail fast. What it basically means is if you have an error, you should fail quickly. You shouldn't propagate this error into the program. So today I'm not gonna talk about failing fast, I'm gonna talk about returning fast. Okay, it's not exactly the same thing, but uh, they look alike. Before we dive into an example, let's first talk about exit points of a function. People are divided into two main groups. People that think that a function should have only one exit point and people who don't care about it. Okay, I'm amongst the, those people who don't really care about how much, uh, how many exit points a function has, as long as it is readable and maintainable. Okay, so you can argue in both directions. Today I'm gonna argue to the direction that you shouldn't really care about how many exit points a function should have. I will show you two examples. One is an example that I explicitly wrote for this episode. And another example is an example that I, of a code that I found online. And I'm gonna show it to you with one exit point of a function and with multiple exit points of a function, okay? And you'll be the judge, which to you looks simple. So let's start with an example of a function that should fetch, given a user, it should fetch the names of the books the user has wrote. First of all, let's create the function fetch books, and it, it receives a username, a user dal user data access layer and a books dal i'm gonna assume one thing that the function should fail only if the arguments that are passed are wrong otherwise it should return an array of book names even if the user doesn't exist or the user doesn't have any books it always should return an array sometimes it can be empty okay so let's write a code which has one exit point okay so let's start by defining a result that will be returned in the end return result and an error which in the end if the error exists we will throw this error okay so this is basically how single exit point of function looks like. So you have here in the middle some code that does stuff and it should fill the error and the result and the function should exit at the end uh, with an error or a result. Okay, so let's write the code uh, that behaves as I said. So let's first check if the username exists. Inside of a check if the user doll exists. Inside of a check if the books doll exist. And then we're gonna fetch the user with the user doll. Fetch user with the username. And then if the user is returned, I'm gonna fetch the books which will be books dal I'm gonna fetch books by the user ID and if the books exist then the result will be books dot map each book to the book dot name and otherwise the result will be an empty array okay so the result shouldn't be a const, it should be a let and same for there. It yells at me on the books because I wrote it with wrong type of error. Okay, so this will be okay now. But for now, we only handled the good path. Now we should handle the bad paths. So what bad paths do we have? We have a path for the username not existing, which will be here. Error should be uh, the username 
you should pass the username. Okay. And if the DAL doesn't exist, we should handle it as well. Error equal you should pass the user DAL. And you can already see it becomes very ugly. So same for the book DAL. The error should be you should pass the book DAL. The books DAL. And now we're getting away from the errors. If the user doesn't exist, as I told you, it, it is okay. We should return an empty array. And if the books do not exist, we should return also an empty array. So this is the code. You can't really see it. Let's make it smaller. Okay. I hope you see it. But you see definitely a pyramid. Okay, a pyramid of indentations and it is quite confusing when you see it for the first time. It will take you a lot of time to read it and understand what happens in each and every scenario. When <clears throat> we have good scenario, when we have partial good scenario, okay, for example, if the arguments are good but uh, some of the uh, data is missing, you will probably uh, jump between the start and the end and will not always know which uh, else refers to which if and it is confusing and it is quite a simple example okay there are many more examples which are much more confusing than this one and it is already complex so now let me refactor this code with two simple strategies fail fast and return fast and let's see how the code looks so let me just make it bigger again okay so now i will not need this code and this code because i will return fast and fail fast so if the username the username doesn't exist what i will do i will throw the error okay I will fail fast and now I don't need this else and the same thing I will check if the DAL doesn't exist what I'm gonna do I'm gonna fail with this error okay and now I don't need this else and the same thing here if the DAL of the books doesn't exist I will fail with this error <clears throat> so now I don't need this else so let me just format it okay let's move this one here this should be like this this should be like this and I didn't finish so now I'm fetching the user and if the user doesn't exist I can already return an empty array so now I don't need this else statement and the final thing that is uh, that I'm fetching are books and again if the books do not exist I will return an empty array and now I don't need this cell statement and instead of result I'm gonna return and here also I'm gonna return okay so now you can see that the code actually became much shorter it is not always the case, sometimes it will be longer, but in, in this case it became shorter. But something that will happen always is the code will get less indented and will have less else statements. Okay, if you see here, we don't have any else statement at all. We have only if statements and if a statement is correct, if it is true, like if we don't have username or dial or Booksdal, we're already failing, we're failing fast. And in these cases, we're checking a other kind of failure, which is which will not result in an error, but which will result in a partial result. And we're handling it with simply returning an empty array. Okay? And this code is one-liner, but you can think of 
any other code which can be as complex as you want uh, that will uh, that will be in this area so these types of if statements okay they are called guard statements and when you're learning recursion you're encountering these guard statements as edge cases okay what happens at the final stage of the recursion when it stops calling the base function so it's almost the same here we're treating all the simple cases and after we handle them we forget about it and now we're left with the main case the main scenario uh, where we will handle the main code the main mass of the code as you saw in this example uh, the refactoring methods are very simple usually what you want to do is put the simplest and shortest code in the if statement and if you need you need to switch the condition of the if statement and after you're doing this all you need to do is return after that if and you will not need the else statement and this will reduce the number of indentation and will make the code flatter when you're doing this kind of refactoring you sometimes don't even need to understand what the code does in order to do this uh, refactoring methods so let's look at an example of a real code that i encountered a few days ago and without even understanding what it does we will refactor it and after we will refactor it we will see a very very good pattern and encounter a few other things that we will actually see uh, after the refactor so let's do it right now okay so now let's look at an example of a real code that i found and encountered a few days ago so look at this code this code here and try to pause this video and understand what this code does so pause now so probably one of three things happened now either you didn't pause this video or you pause this video try to read this code and didn't really understand what it does or you understood this code vaguely what it's supposed to do but if i'll ask you what is the condition for logging a debug or a warn or an error or an info you will probably it will be probably hard for you to tell okay so let's just look one second at this code and see that this code is what it actually does it logs with some logger errors warns debugs and infos and it does it in certain conditions and these conditions are written in from my point of view in a very horrible way because it is really 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 hard to navigate and to understand what happens here and which condition leads to which statement and what are the conditions to like for example to write a debug message what should happen so let's take this code and without understanding the conditions and the meanings of the conditions let's refactor it with the methods that i told you before switching the small condition and the easy condition to be the first condition and failing and returning fast so let's just copy this function so you will see the original well you won't see it immediately but uh, if you open this file which the repository is linked in the description you will see both the original and the new refactor function so let's call it uh, refactored okay and let's start refactoring this function so first of all what i see is this if statement without even knowing what it does it it is for the whole function meaning that if i switch the condition to be the negative condition of the same condition i can remove one indentation of the function so this is what i'm gonna do i'm gonna negate this whole condition and return return okay so after doing this i can simply indent this code one indentation to the left 
Now the next thing that I notice is that we have this if statement, the next one, which has inside the if one liner and inside an else multiple lines. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna return after this condition execution and this way I will not longer need the else statement. And next thing what I'm noticing is again this if statement is encapsulating all the code so I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna negate the condition and return immediately this way I can remove the indentation again and same here I can return after this statement immediately so I don't need this else statement I can return here so now I don't need this statement and that's it okay so now we don't have any indentations let me just make it closer to each other all the if statements so now we have a single flow of all the functions without any indentation our code became much more flat okay and it already helps how does it help well first of all we can see that in every time we are logging, which will be an error, a warning, a debug or an info, we are calling the same function. It is very clear to us because we see them in one line, in one column. And we can notice that these functions are called, well, they are called with almost the same arguments, except the last argument. Here and here is the argument is the same. But here and here the argument is different, it is, it is true and false. But we can notice that actually it is the same argument, because here true, the argument is true when the bug is enabled, because this is the condition, and here it is false, also when the bug enabled is false, because if it were true we would enter this statement and return. So we can switch this true and this false by the same condition and now we can see well you probably don't see because of my head but now you can see well maybe now you can see that the build SQL timing dump is actually the same function so now what we can do we can extract it we can extract this function to be and because we're logging which we will call it a message okay and after we extract it our code will look like this okay so it became a little bit less messy but we can still make it better what can we make better okay so you can look at this condition Okay, and you can see that it is quite a complicated condition with lots of ands, nots, and ors, and it is quite hard to understand what happens. So let's make another refactoring simply by using the, the Morgan uh, rules, which you should look what they mean, but basically uh, it is when you have a not over a condition, you should flip both sides of the condition and flip the or to an end or an end to an or. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna remove this not and put not on both sides of the condition and flip the end to be nor. And now I have the same thing for the second condition. So I'm gonna remove this not. I'm gonna flip both conditions to be a not. And I'm gonna flip the or to be an end. Okay, so the condition stayed the same. Now I can remove one bracket from each side and now what I see is I have a NOR condition. Okay, I can leave it as is, like this, but I can split it into two different ifs and this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this condition and return after it and I will take this condition and also return after it. Either way, the logic stayed the same. So now let's look at the resulted function and what we have here. And let's look at the flow of the logic. So 
If we don't have error enabled, we are returning. It is very simple line that tells us that we will only log if the error is enabled. Okay? You can probably see that in the same logic in the original function, but it is much harder to notice it because it is inside this long if statement and you need to understand that if the error enabled is false, we will not continue checking the else statement and we will exit this if. Okay, it is much harder to see. It is not that hard, but it is harder to see. And so now we see that we will not log when the error is not enabled <clears throat> and we will not log at all if the filter is on. Okay, and if we should not log this SQL. Okay, so these are the main conditions where we will not log at all. And the next thing we see is that the message, we're building the log message and it is the same message. And it is not dependent on what type of log we're logging, error, info, debug, or war. Okay, so the message will be the same, which is again, much harder to see here you can probably see the same true and false we did the same trick with the true and false we did before but again it is harder to see why this is true and what to, we, to what line it is related and again with same with the false <clears throat> and now it is quite easy to say when error will be logged it will be logged only if well something will be logged and if a threshold for the error is uh, exists okay and we ex exceeded this threshold if we didn't exceed this threshold an error will not be logged and uh, we go to the next step we check if the warning is not enabled so if the warning is not enabled we know that the only thing that we will log will be an error okay and this is again much harder to see here if the warning is not enabled, you can see here, but it is again much difficult to see, uh, that if it is not enabled, we will not enter this area of code and only enter this area of code. Okay, so again, the logic is the same, but we will not pass this barrier. We will not even look at this code, okay, and not look at what happens here. And the same thing uh, happens again. If the uh, warning threshold uh, was exceeded, we will log warning. And uh, again, if the debug is enabled, we will debug. Otherwise, if info is enabled, we will uh, log it as info. So when looking at this function, you can see that there are many, many, many if statements. And after passing each and every if statement, you're getting inside a more deep and complicated logic, but you can forget about the previous logic. Okay, so for example, you need to pass this if statements if you want to log an error. But you need to pass all these if statements if you need to log a debug. So now you can easily answer me what should happen in order for me to get a debug message. So you, you need to tell me that error should be enabled, that the filter should be off, or the SQL should be logged and we shouldn't exceed the error threshold the warning should be disabled and the warning threshold should be should not be reached and the bug should be enabled okay so you can tell me in a sequence of lines in very very confident way what should happen for me to get a debug message. So after programming like this for a while, a few things that I've noticed. I've noticed that I rarely use else statements. I prefer using return inside an if. And when I see an else statement, the first thing that comes to my mind is whether I should refactor this code and return instead of using an else statement and make the indentation one uh, bit less. Also, I have noticed that the indentation pyramids that I get, well, I don't get them. The biggest indentation that I have is probably one or two, and the code is much more flat and linear, and uh, it looks better, and you can probably understand 
uh, more from looking at it just for, for the first time. And also I usually notice when I remove the indentation of a, an existing code or I write code without these indentations, I notice duplication, like in the example that we did before, where we noticed that the function, the dump function, is called with different parameters, but they are actually the same. Uh, it happens to me a lot. I see code duplication and I can easily extract it to a single point uh, or extracting it to a method after I reduce the indentation. So I encourage you to try it for yourself. Just go over your existing code and try using this method to refactor the code, to remove the indentations and return fast and see what results you get and please comment with the results uh, you received and any problems you encountered with it. Because probably this technique will not work in 100% of the times, but from my experience it works almost in every case. You have watched an episode about fast returns and multiple exit points from a function. Let me know what you think about it by leaving a comment in the comment section down below. You can watch more programming tips videos by clicking over here, or you can trust YouTube to know what you really want to see and click over here. If you want to watch more code related videos, check out my channel and feel free to subscribe. See you later! Program artist.